Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here today to do a little sort of course on clips. And I'm holding a magazine specifically to trigger at least one person before they get through the entirety of the sentence. So, we're going to talk about clips in the actual sense of clips. No, not, not magazines. We're not, the, we're not the media here, okay? And we're not talking about the stripper clips to load a magazine, no. Today we're talking about the clips used to attach stuff to your gear, which I guess Clips is really only going to apply to like HSGI and uh, Tactical Tailor, and the others are going to be all well, normal straps. So straps and clips, well I guess Alice Clips is an option, but I'm pretty sure we're well past that point and people will make archaic 1911 jokes at you. So let's get started. We're going to be talking about attaching gear to the Molly PAL system on your plate carrier's vest and all that good jazz. So first off, we'll start with the relatively standard one. This one's actually going to be running on our LBT uh, magazine shingle, and it's the standard little buckle clasp thing. I'm sure there's an official name for it, but I don't do my research before starting these videos. So there you have it. So these ones are pretty simple. It's a little, but a little standard button. You got your other button. It's like a pair of pants. Clip them together. Pants. They're the pants attachment. There we go. I've renamed them. They're officially the old school pants attachment. So, these are pretty simple. They, um, I mean, you can deform the metal and cause all sorts of problems. They don't always work with you. Fortunately, with LBT, they do. But if you have any other Eagle Industries or anything like that, you may run into problems. And LBT does this nice little job here. They've actually got a stiffer doubled up portion here to help it feed and thread through. And this one, you'll see there's actually two ways these can cut off. And on this one, as you can see here, there's enough room for the molly to weave through here, then weave over through the vest, then through the pouch, then through the vest again, then through the pouch, and it cuts off on the pouch side. What this means is that this part here is going to be going through the pouch last and then here, which means if there's any sort of tug at the bottom, it's going to have this keeping it in place and it's generally going to stay attached. Other ones, particularly with Eagle, tend to run through the vest or attachment one more time and then clip. What this means is that if it catches on anything, there's a pretty high chance that it's actually going to pop the button by itself and come loose to an extent. Anyway, it's probably not going to fly off your plate gear or anything, but it is a bit of an inconvenience and they could be a real pain to uh, re-button down after that. And with this one, basically you're sacrificing a wee bit of stability. There's going to be a little bit more flop, but it's going to keep everything buckled on down. So that's pretty cool. And that's your most standard basic one. And LBT makes fantastic gear, by the way, so also bear that in mind. So that's pretty cool. That's your basic one. The next one I really encountered was going into the 511 phase. Well, I mean, I did have a little Blackhawk Hydro pouch, but it was terrible. It tasted awful, and I very quickly learned that the quality was garbage. They used a weird piece of plastic that you would weave through and then part of it would catch the molly and then it would go between the two and then clash them back. The theory was you could detach the bottom and strip them out real quick, but they hold pretty flimsy and ultimately I can't recommend them. They're kind of garbage. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna retroactively fix that one. They are terrible, don't use them. But moving on from that phase, we got into 511. 511 is pretty your medium standard kind of get up your, you know, a step above your issued basic gear, but you're still not getting into the super operator hardcore, let's go shoot Bin Laden in the face, cry levels. So, 511 is still pretty good stuff. I do like 511. 511 has their uh, speed clips, or speed strips, or whatever they call them nowadays. These are actually pretty nifty. They're uh, latched in here to the top, and if you pop one of these free, it does the thing that Blackhawk was trying to do, but without being absolute garbage. Hey, check that out. So these ones, again, you weave it through, you weave it through however you want there. You can actually, what's pretty nice about this is the way the Molly here is set up is although it's not designed to go straight on a belt that doesn't have Molly, you can put it through these two here and it'll attach the most belts with a bit of give, but it's pretty flexible and you weave this on in. This one actually, does the through the bottom pouch side attachment so it doesn't come unclipped. These round circular things, I'm not sure what witchcraft was involved, but these have a tendency, a tendency to far less become unhinged if they catch on anything than your standard setup. But it's not bad. It's pretty cool. It's a nifty design choice, I think. 
They don't have uh, proper steel grommets, though. They've just got fabric grommets, so... Yeah. We're not worried about that right now. So yeah, that clips into there. And if you have your pouch on, and you go, Wow! I really don't need this pouch anymore. You just hit those two buttons on the bottom, and you go, Zip! Zip! And you go, Pouch! Away from me! And you are relieved of the pouch. So 511! Good stuff! I would definitely recommend them. Uh, basic Eagle gear is still pretty good. 511 is definitely nice. I do like my 511. I've only found their stuff in, mysteriously, tan as opposed to Cody Brown. There's LBT. You get to go over there too. Very nice. So the next thing I really ran into, I guess you could say I ran into this earlier than initially, actually before those, before the 511. My good buddy, Redbeard, and other people on the team gave me some magazine pouches to work with. And this first one, I didn't know it at the time is Tactical Tailor. I'm actually taking the bungees off because it actually has some pretty solid grip and unless I'm doing inverted repels I'm probably not going to lose any of the magazines. So, nifty little thing. This one has three Malice Clips. See what they did there? They took Alice and they put an M on the end. Malice Clips. And, there's, and you can actually fit one more here. There's just a single one because it kept the bungee centered for the molly up front. But I think having the standard uh, four-piece setup like we had with the LBT set up here. I like that double center then on the outside flanks. This one's got three, so you can fit it on five pieces of molly if you wanted to, which actually probably fit best. You really don't need more than that. Malice clips have this nice little pull tab at the bottom, and they don't have anything attached directly to the pouch itself. This is open setup molly. Some of them are tighter together, of course. This is a uh, older version, but it works out really well. So the malice clips, they come in different sizes. You have the short ones for admin pouches and grenades and stuff, and then you got these long ones for the tall magazine setups. So these, you generally just lift this tab here and you open it. Now this is going to be really difficult to do with a nail, so you usually have like a small multi-tool or something with a screwdriver head, something soft enough that you can pop in there, generally rounded, softer screwdriver head, pop that in there, and this pops right open. And these are pretty thick. Well this, um, it's a pain, it's really a pain to actually weave in, I'm not going to lie, but once it's in, it is not coming out, unless you're on fire and upside down. And even then, these might be fire resistant to an extent. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Malice clips, registered, trademark, and manufactured in the USA by Tactical Taylor Incorporated. So yeah, nifty malice clips. These are really strong and an absolute pain to weave into your gear with how thick they are. But once they're in, they're staying in. And you can put these on pretty much anything. That's another one of the benefits for these is um, if you were to cut the straps off any of your other gear, if you so chose to do so, you can leave these through here and that will attach the mouse gear setup, mouse clip setup. Really nice. They've actually improved it a bit. They have the, the fight lights have started coming out with the uh, sort of cutaway thinner, more flexible ones, which I, I think is actually nicer. I mean, they're lighter weight and everything. The alternative is HSGI as the WTF clips, which I'm sure it doesn't mean what we all want it to mean. But again, like the BFG 9000 in the original Doom series, good stuff. Those ones are basically a far thinner, more flexible material. And when they weave in through here, instead of having this little pull tab, there's a little uh, plastic button nub and there's a slit down the center. So you basically Weave it through here pretty successfully. It's not too hard because they're a lot thinner and more flexible. They hold just as well as malice clips, I'd argue. And then once you feed it back through here on the opposite end where the button, I forgot to mention, it's on the opposite end where the button and the tab is, you just put that button in there, you clip it, and it's set. And to remove it, you just pull it from the side and pop it over the button, and you can remove it. So I do think, although malice clips are pretty amazing and easy to use, I will argue the HSGI W2F clips are actually even better. Now as far as those, however, the trouble is I already have, the only place I have them is mounted on my plate carrier, which I'm currently doing modifications to. And as you can see, oh my god, everything's gone wrong. As you can see down here, there's the little button set up where the little tab ports through. And on the back end you can kind of see how it just weaves in through there and then buttons on the other side. And that's pretty much all there is to it. As you can see, it is quite secure to the plate carrier. So I'd argue that's probably among the best options. And lastly, there you have the flop tab, the reversed flop tab, I'm going to call it. 
This, I first found them on Warrior Assault Gear, but I've been informed by the internet that they originated with Blue Force Gear. Now what you have is still your pretty standard sort of setup here, but what you got is a tab with a little plastic uh, piece in there. And what you do is after you weave this all through, you basically just fold it back over and into this slot right here, and it locks itself in place and the plastic helps keep it from popping up. Now, as far as the more standard setups go, this is gonna be my favorite. But if we're talking about detachable, removable pieces, I'm gonna to have to say the, H the WTF uh, clips from HSGI are the best. So, this was the one I got initially, Warrior Assault Gear. And they also have this on their uh, little hydro pack thing as well. As you can kind of see, those are also weaved back and through because it's not attached to a plate carrier and they've effectively stayed out of the way. They didn't flop around like I thought they would. So this is very This is a very simple, oh look, when it's not attached, you can just pull them right out. So this is very simple, very successful, very easy to do. It doesn't include buttons or anything, so there's no uh, risk of becoming unbuttoned. As long as you can web it on through there, you're all set. So very simple and very effective sort of setup there. And I like it a lot. If I was going with standard attached to the pouch, I would go with these little flappy tabs with a uh, Blue Force gear and Warrior Cell systems. But if given the option, I would definitely go for the WTF straps from HSGI. Because even though I have very little experience with them, being entirely on my little bleeder IFAC, they work really well, they're flexible, they're easy to put in, easy to take off. Very nice. Very nice. So, that's basically what we got for the ways I've seen to attach gear to your stuff. I'm sure there's other things. I'm sure someone's just wanting a 550 cord. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some people are physically sewing their patches into their play carriers. I'm sure at least one person's done it. I absolutely know that for a fact. At least one person's had to have done it. But yeah. Cool, simple little stuff, easy ways to, you know, put patches on there. I thought it was pretty cool, get all the pouches and everything set up, so that's cool stuff. I would like to get some more WTF straps. They're apparently not terribly expensive, like $10 for four or something. And yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day I, I will have $10. YouTube uh, having their fun demonetization thing. Mm took away the only ten dollars I ever made online so yeah um, that's all I really got so if you didn't know about those well hey congratulations now you do know there's more ways to do it and if you did know then hey cool thanks for watching the video I hope you enjoyed the t-shirt and yeah that's pretty much everything and the camera set over here because I have a package I need to send over here and you don't need to see it so yeah that's everything if you have any questions feel free to hit me up. If you know of any other straps I didn't cover, then yeah, that's also pretty cool. I'm always cool to gain more knowledge, just pull it from the masses, place it in my brain. Let's sit there on my on a hat and percolate through the cranium. So yeah, cheers everyone, stay chill, roast up your enjoy the video, and uh, yeah, um, if you get the chance, do the thing, you know, the thing.